Hello, and welcome to today's daily study. Today we're going to be talking about something that we did talk kind of in depth about, but we actually, I wanted to go a little bit more in depth about it and, and kind of reinforce the teaching here. So this is in Matthew 25, and this really talks about our obligations to our fellow man and how our offerings to our neighbors and our fellow beings along the way, along their own path of, <clears throat> of life and, and trial, that how we're expected to act to them and the blessings that come from behaving in such a way. And so in this, the, the symbolism, of course, being that the ones that follow Christ and make covenants are on Christ's right hand and are known as sheep because they follow the good shepherd. So I know a lot of times people take sheep to be offensive, you know, a wake up sheeple or whatever it is that they say, you know. Uh, but the problem is, is that it's not like that with our Heavenly Father, not like that with Jesus Christ. In following him, our eyes become far more open than those who go blindly into the world that Heavenly Father created. We follow the person who created the world, will know more about the world than those who decide to go off and, and try and figure things out for themselves. So, especially when all knowledge comes from our Heavenly Father and all light comes from our Heavenly Father. So, anyway, uh, and then I'm going to go over some of the Book of Mormon relationships to this and how we've been, how the teaching is expanded in the Book of Mormon. Anyway, and so uh, this one is in Matthew 25, 31, uh, starting in verse 31. And when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and shall be, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. So again, this is something that's going to happen to everyone. It's not something that's going to be in secret. It's not something that's hidden. It's not something that you're not going to know is going on. No, this is something that is going to happen to everyone. Everyone is going to be before Christ. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. And again, the right hand is the covenant hand. So this is symbolizing people who have made and kept covenants with our Heavenly Father with Jesus Christ, and that he's setting them on his right hand in order to symbolize that they've kept those covenants, and his covenant, his end of the covenant, is going to be fulfilled for them. And the goats on the left, so in other words, they received no covenants, they kept no covenants, and so they have no blessings coming to them. There's no covenant that's being kept on their behalf. Uh, then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So again, Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father want you to succeed, and this is more evidence of that. They prepared a huge blessing, a kingdom of your own, basically, for the those that would make and would keep covenants and he wants you to succeed in that that's why he's prepared it he hasn't doubted that people were going to succeed because otherwise they wouldn't have been prepared from the foundation of the world it would have been prepared as people succeeded but no it's it, this kingdom was prepared since the foundation of the world for you to achieve and for you to become a part of he wants you to succeed and so, uh, then shall the king say to him on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee? 
thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came in unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. And so, again, Christ is our older brother. We're all spiritual sons and daughters of God. Christ was the firstborn, and he was the firstborn of the flesh. And so uh, he, he holds a, a very unique position among the brotherhood of Christ. But here it shows specifically that he acknowledges us as his brothers. And here he's saying, like, you you did good to me when I needed good. And they're like, well, when did you need good? And when did we fulfill that? And he's like, when you did it to my brethren, when you did it to your brothers and sisters, to the other people in the world that have need of this. Now, obviously, we can't do all things all the time. There are too, there is too many good things to do for one person to be able to do them all. And so we prioritize and we figure out where we can do the most good, and that's where we focus our efforts. But this application applies to that too. The idea is our willingness. If we could, we would be going to visit those in prison. If we could, we would be giving to the hungry. We would be clothing the naked. We would be doing those things. But there are people that are doing those things. And so we help in whatever way we can. And so here it's Christ isn't saying you specifically did all these things and you specifically didn't do all these things. So you're you're in trouble. No, he's saying you did this, you did this, you did this. And as you did that, you were serving me. And that's acceptable. And that is what Christ wants from us. That's acceptable to him. And then we see the, the contrast in what he says to those who were on his left hand, the, the goats. And then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in, naked, and ye clothed me not, thick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? In other words, when, so, when did we see you in need, and we not give you uh, what you needed? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not unto one of the least of these, ye did it not unto me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto life eternal. And so here we see kind of uh, an important difference in what's expected, but as well the reward that you get. You gave of your abundance, you gave of your ability, you gave all that you could. Now Christ gives you far more than you ever gave. Everything that, every sacrifice you made is perfectly and fairly recompensed through, through Christ and through the plan of happiness. There is nothing you're giving up now for Christ, for doing what Christ has asked us to do, for me, it's taking care of my family. For you, maybe it's uh, it's providing for for yourself. Maybe it's uh, helping out, serving in, in some form of service or another, serving a mission maybe. But uh, that us doing all that we can, that is enough. That is good. And we receive far more for that sacrifice than we've ever given up in the pursuit of that sacrifice. And so, um, and then this relates a lot to what we read in Messiah. And so in Messiah, there are a couple verses, one in Messiah 2, which is one that uh, is well known throughout the church. It says, And behold, I tell you these things, that ye may learn wisdom, that ye may learn that ye, when ye are in the service of your fellow beings, 
ye are only in the service of your God. And so here King Messiah is talking to a, a large group of people. And in this large group of people, he's trying to give them the, the needed information in order for them to be successful after he's passed on. And here, success for King Benjamin isn't monetary wealth. It's kindness. It's, it's generosity to our fellow beings. It's following the commandments. And here he's saying that when you serve others, you are serving your Heavenly Father. The sacrifices you make to help others is truly you helping your Father. That's your, your Heavenly Father. And so, um, and he continues on after that, even saying, Behold, ye have called me your king. And if I, whom ye call your king, do labor to serve you, then ought ye not to labor to serve one another? So he wasn't just a king that was sitting there taking from the people. He was giving to the people. He was being a good example of leadership in that he wasn't taking from those that didn't have. He wasn't taking from his people and, and giving nothing. He was giving all that he could. And then as king, of course, there are requirements. There are things that need to be done. People need to be taken for the, the uh, protection of, of the kingdom and stuff like that. But in the end, the, the point here is, is that he, in a, a position of leadership, of worldly leadership and wealth and influence, served others. And so if he is serving others as a king, how much more do we need to serve others being just average Joes, average Joes and average Janes? And then in Messiah 5, 13, it says, For how knoweth a man a master whom he has not served? So how are we going to know our Heavenly Father if we haven't served him? And who is a stranger unto him and is far from the thoughts and intents of his heart? Uh, so, and that all goes together. So my intonation is a little off. So, for how knoweth a man the master whom he has not served and who is a stranger unto him and is far from the thoughts and intents of his heart? It's really. Anyway, and so we see another purpose for service and why Heavenly Father wants us to serve. Remember Christ's prayer. This is life in, eternal, to know thee, the one true God, in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And here, how do you know the one true God unless you serve him? And from the teachings of Christ and Messiah, of course, under the influence of the Holy Ghost, so again, uh, testifying of Christ and his doctrine, like, how are you going to know your Heavenly Father unless you are serving Him and serving your fellow being? You serve your fellow being, you're serving Heavenly Father, and therefore you know your Heavenly Father by the service you give to your fellow being. And Heavenly Father rewards that service. Again, there is no sacrifice that we make that Heavenly Father doesn't give us a return a hundredfold. He doesn't, it's not like he's saying, okay, you give to me and then, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. So just do that. No, he says, you give to me and I will give to you greater. Anything you give to me, I will make greater and it will be a far better blessing to you than that which you gave to me. And so I I just want to promise you and and really bear my testimony about the fact that Heavenly Father will always give you better than you give to Him. He wants you to succeed. He loves you, and He is going to make sure that everything you give to Him, He gives to you a hundredfold better, even more. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope very much to see you tomorrow.